Hello, everybody. Welcome to another Holistic Health and Healing Call. This is episode 10 of our course calls, and we want to jump right into the few questions that we have. Number one, are autoimmune diseases curable? Are autoimmune diseases curable? Well, the honest answer to that is no, they're not. I mean, I believe God can do anything, but in reality, you know, some things just are not going to go away. There is no current drug, you know, medicine, nutritional, functional medicine um, formula for making, you know, self-antibodies disappear in a person's body. So an autoimmune disease is when a person has antibodies to self-tissue, and then there's three different phases or stages of an autoimmune disease. Um, and the third stage is when a person has, you know, the autoantibodies, we need self-antibodies, and now they have tissue damage. Uh, so let's say in the case of like rheumatoid arthritis, they'd have bony nodules on their joints. They might have swan-like deformity of their joints, meaning their fingers are are deforming outward. And um, this, this is not something you could cure. So the treatment from a functional medicine perspective is to manage it. You know, the treatment from a, a standard medicine perspective is to manage it as well, but they're managing it through drugs. Functional medicine perspective is trying to manage it through natural means. Problem with managing some of these diseases through drugs, the drugs are pretty nasty and have a lot of side effects and cause other problems and a lot of people just don't like to continue to take them. So managing them, through natural means can help reduce symptoms, can help get at the cause, but still not even if you, if, let's say the cause of your autoimmune disease was biotoxin, or let's say the cause that like in rheumatoid, if we keep to that example, very common cause of rheumatoid is, is um, heavy metal toxicity. But even if you get rid of the heavy metals, you're not, you haven't gotten rid of the rheumatoid factor, you haven't gotten rid of the antibodies to the joint capsules. Um, and you haven't got rid of the continued destruction. So you can help a person. It could decrease symptoms. It could decrease the flares. Um, and that's really the goal in a functional medicine perspective is to manage them more appropriately so you don't, you know, you could make choices about your drug use and maybe decrease the side effects of those. And you can um, decrease your flares and your symptoms. Second question, if Lyme gets into my brain, how do I know and what's the best solution? Well, Lyme and its co-infections can and may cross the blood-brain barrier. Um, and if they do cross the blood-brain barrier, immediately your immune system in your brain kicks in, which is your microglial cells to try to kill them and eliminate the infection. Problem is that Lyme and its co-infections can damage these microglial cells and then you can end up, worst case scenario, uh, second worst case scenario is you end up with what's called microglial priming. I have a whole video on that uh, called brain inflammation. Um, but microglial priming causes a huge inflammation process in the brain uh, and causes continual problems for literally decades. It's not something that goes away once uh, microglial cells are damaged in this primed state. They don't undamage and go out of the primed state. And your goal is to try to keep them in a non-inflammatory primed state. And I give examples of how to do that. We work through that as an individual basis. Second, the, the number one worst case scenario is you also um, you could develop antibodies to brain tissue. When you would develop antibodies to brain tissue, now you have uh, basically an, another autoimmune disease that's affecting neural tissue, and that can cause constant erosion of and degeneration and degrading of neural tissue and all sorts of problems. So it does become a nasty thing. This is something that's there's no easy solution to this. Um, you do want to work on building back that blood-brain barrier, but you have to work on decreasing the inflammation, decreasing the the um, the, the prime microglials, and trying to push them into a non-inflammatory state. And it's a giant process, and it's it's a work in progress too, because it's not something that just happens 
very quickly. So again, it's managing. So this person now has an autoimmune issue and you're managing this disease, trying to decrease layers. Next question, what's the best way to test for food sensitivities? There's a lot of different food sensitivity tests out there. Some are less expensive, um, but they're not nearly as good a quality. The best quality test is the Cyrex test, C-Y-R-E-X. I have information on most of the courses on the Cyrex testing. And the most appropriate Cyrex test or the most expanded Cyrex test is the Cyrex Array 10 for food sensitivities. The Array 10. It's, it, I have information on the courses on why it's the best test. There's numerous reasons why. It's the antibody that it tests. It's testing for cooked and raw foods. Uh, and you have different peptides in the cooked versus raw foods. So you have to test for both of them. Um, and it gives you a good balanced uh, uh, number of foods that most people eat. So that is the best test to do with Cyrex Array 10. Okay, that's it for questions for today. Hope this blessed everybody. And I'll be praying for you. And I'll talk to you in a couple of weeks. Bye-bye.